page three of your review of your review starts with uh, problem eight, and this is um this is a subtle thing having to do with exponents and uh, negative numbers that I didn't completely understand until I became a teacher. So um, I want to make sure that you understand it. We're asked this is a quantitative comparison problem, and we're comparing the quantities in box A and box B. And at first glance, it may look like they're the same because this is negative third, negative three to the fourth power, and this looks like negative three to the fourth power. However, this is not negative three to the fourth power. In this expression, the base is positive three. And this expression is saying the opposite of three to the fourth power. And so the opposite of three to the fourth power is the opposite of three multiplied by three multiplied by three multiplied by three, which is the opposite of nine times nine or 81. So this is negative 81, box B. Box A is, the in this case, the base number is negative 3. So box B is, uh, I'm sorry, box A is negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 multiplied by negative 3. And a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive, so that's 9 multiplied by another 9, which is positive 81. And for that reason, these boxes are not equal. A is greater than B. Problem 9 asks us to um, order these fractions from least to greatest. And we could certainly um, find the prime factorization of the denominators, sort them into a Venn diagram to find the LCM. However, I think with these numbers, uh, it's pretty easy to find the, the least common denominator by just taking the largest number, 12, and thinking of multiples of 12. So the first, well, the first multiple of 12 is 0, but we're talking about positive multiples. So if you think of the first multiple, uh, the first positive multiple of 12 is 12, and 12 is a, a multiple of 3, but not a multiple of 9. Then you think of the next multiple of 12 is 24, and that's also a multiple of 3, but, but not a multiple of 9. The next multiple of 12 is 3 twelves, which is 36, and that's a multiple of both 3 and 9. So we can turn all of our fractions into 36. Ninths multiplied by fourths gives you 36, and we want to multiply all. We want to multiply by all four fourths, so that I haven't that I don't change my five ninths. I'm using the multiplicative identity by multiplying by one in the form of four fourths. Five multiplied by four is 20. Two thirds will be multiplied by 12 twelfths to give us 24 36, and seven twelfths will be multiplied by 3 thirds, giving us 21 36. Um, least to greatest, so the, the least of these would be 5 ninths, because 20 is less than 21 is less than 24. The next would be 21 36, which is 7 twelfths. And finally, 24 36 is 2 thirds. So this is our list from least to greatest. Problem number 10 on your review, and the last problem on page 3 asks us to identify all factors of 208, and I underlined all so that we weren't thinking it's prime factors. In order to find all factors, we need the, uh, well there's many ways to do it, but we, the UT model is helpful to identify prime factor pairs starting with the first, I mean not prime factor, to identify factor pairs starting with 1 because 1 is a factor of all numbers. So 1 multiplied by 208. 208 is divisible by 2, so that will be 2 multiplied by 104. To check divisibility by 3, we um, find the sum of the digits 2 plus 0 plus 8 is 10, and 10 is not divisible by 3. It's not a multiple of 3, so 3 won't work. For 4, we consider the number formed by the 10s and the 1s digit and that number is 8, and 8 is divisible by 4, so 4 must be a factor of 208. We see that we could double the 2 to get 4, so we take half of this 104, which would be half of 100 is 50, and half of 4 is 2, so 52. 5 is not a factor because the 1's digit is not a 0 or a 5. Um, 6 is not a factor because in order for it, the number to be divisible by 6, it would have to be divisible by 2 and 3, both 2 and 3. 
uh, 7, I don't know. Actually, 7 I do know because if you think about 210, that's 30 sevens. And 208 is 2 less than that. It would have to be 7 less than that or 7 more than that to be a multiple of 7. So 7 doesn't work. You can just divide 208 by 7 if you want to see that, that there's a remainder. If you want to uh, double check that. 8 might work because um, 4 is here. So let me put 8 here and, and think about this. If I'm doubling the 4, I need to take half of 52. And I can take half of 52 and still have a whole number. That would be 26. Um, 9 doesn't work because 3 is not up here. The only way it could be a fa 9 could be a factor is if 3 is also a factor. Uh, 10 is not a factor because this number doesn't end in a 0. It's not a 0 in the 1's place. <clears throat> 11, uh, 2 plus 8 is 10. And 10 minus 0 is 10, so that's not a multiple of 11, so that doesn't work. In order for 12 to be a factor, we'd have, have to be divisible by 3 and 4, and it's not. Um, this, this is the point where we might start to think that we found them all, but we have to be careful. Um, you can't really stop until you get to the number that's the square root of 208. 208 is not a perfect square, so that's not very helpful unless you know a number close to 208 that is a perfect square. Um, like 225 is 15 squared. So if we check all the way up to 15 and we don't find any more, then we're done. But so far we've only checked up to 12. So there's no rule for 13. We just have to divide by 13. Uh, there's 0 13s and 2. There's 1 13 and 20 because 1 13 is 13. Subtract, I get a difference of 7. Bring down the 8. There are exactly 6 13s and 78. 6 times 13 is 78. So there is another factor pair here. 13 multiplied by 16 will give you 208. And then 14 can't be on the list because 7 is not. And 15, we already said 15 squared is 225, so that would be too much. So our list, um, now that we've got the T and we've completed our list, we make our, our factor pairs, we make the U. And then we follow the from the least to greatest, 1, 2, 4, 8, 13. Follow the U, follow the arrow to 16, 26, 52, 104, and 208. That's the list in ascending order. Okay, I hope that helped with page 3. We'll finish the review with page 4 in the next video.